The ARK Invest ETFs and Kathy Wood are in big, big trouble, and it's largely due to Tesla stock, yes. And I'll explain why and what's going on in this video. This is important to track because a lot of us are either directly invested in these ARK ETFs, or we're invested in one of the stocks that they're invested in, including Tesla. But even if you have nothing to do with Kathy Wood, ARK, or Tesla, this is still important because these guys are the leaders of this bull market. Where they go, the market is gonna follow, to the upside and the downside, and that's the important part right there. And as I'll explain in this video, they are all very closely tied together. So first we'll go over the problems that ARK Invest is running into, and then we'll explain how it relates to Tesla. Now we all know Kathy Wood has absolutely blown up over the last few years. She is the queen of the markets right now. But that imaginary crown right here, it's getting pretty heavy. Because when you get a profile like Kathy Wood, now everyone's watching you. And when you're making a bunch of money fast, things can get pretty shaky fast too, which is exactly what's happening now. Now there is an article on Zero Hedge that talks about all of of this. And yes, I know, Zero Hedge, the most bearish blog there possibly is. So everything they say, you gotta take with a grain of salt. But at the same time, they do make good points. And you know here at Fallible, we're always looking at the downside so we can manage our risk. So it pays to look at information like this and gauge the probability of it actually happening so you can protect yourself. And this article right here, I actually got from Michael Burry. He retweeted it. And as you see, he is quoted in this article because he was talking about Kathy Wood recently too. And you know Michael Burry, right, from the big short, see his real really enthused face right here. But anyway, let's jump into this article. So one of the big things that propelled ARK Investment and Kathy Wood so high these last few years was their commitment to transparency. So every day at the end of the day, ARK would email out its trades. That way all the followers of the firm and the investors could see which stocks Kathy Wood was picking. And everyone loved this, right? In this new age of technology, everything is transparent so everyone can see what everyone else is doing and there's a lot less scams. But when you're a huge hedge fund, just like the one that ARK Invest has turned into, there's a lot of problems that come up when everyone can see exactly what you're doing. There's a reason why hedge funds use dark pools and they pull off all these tricks to hide their trades. And they do it so that others can't screw them over. Because if you're publishing every single thing that you're doing, people can front run you and they can make your life hell. And as we'll see in a second, that's pretty much happening for Kathy and Ark. So to help avoid that, Ark has actually stopped publishing some of their sales and their trades. And now they have a bunch of disclosures and disclaimers to those daily emails. They used to just have a simple spreadsheet that showed all the buying and all the selling but not anymore. Now there's a disclaimer that says they will exclude initial secondary public offering transactions and ETF creation redemption unit activity. Meaning they're not gonna tell you every move that they're making anymore. So they have a whole new disclaimer on their site where they admit that trade files do not include certain trades. So this is just a sign, right? And it's not exactly unexpected because like I said, if you're becoming a bigger and bigger hedge fund, you're not gonna telegraph your moves like this anymore. That transparency definitely helped them get to where they are today, but now, you know, they're gonna have to change. And that's gonna be kind of a theme that you see throughout this video and the story of Kathy and Ark is that change that's going to come. Because the same things that they were doing when they're small, they're not going to be able to keep doing them while they're big. The whole fund structure will likely have to change. But keep in mind that they haven't made this change yet. So during this transition, which is the hardest part, that's where you could see things collapse. That's where you could potentially see the funds downfall. Because that transition is not easy. So along with this happening, there have been record outflows for Ark's flagship fund, the Ark ETF. This is the Innovation ETF, AI. RKK. You can see this chart right here. They've had inflows like crazy day after day for years. And now finally they're getting these huge, huge outflows, these red bars. They saw over $200 million in outflows, breaking their 18 month trend. In fact, between their five ARK ETFs, they saw outflows of 443 million in one day. Look at this, tons and tons of money flowing out. Now after those outflows, they did get record inflows as well. So you can see right here from Bloomberg, after those big red days, which this is black and white now, they had this huge, huge spike in inflows. It was the second biggest inflow ever. Now tracking these inflows and outflows are important because it's telling you how many people are buying and selling their funds. And that directly affects how ARK can invest. So if everyone starts flowing out of the fund, they gotta sell a bunch of shares. And as you'll see in a second, that is a problem when they have to do that fast because they're too big now. But as we said right here, there were huge outflows, but there were huge inflows too. So what does that mean? Well, here's the thing. Just like any stock, the whole thing isn't gonna collapse at one time. You're gonna get periods of large outflows interlaced with periods of big inflows too because people are seeing value and they want to buy in again. So again, most of the time when the stock market or stock collapses, it doesn't go straight down like this. You know, it zigzags. The biggest rallies in the market, if we're just talking about the general overall market, they happen in bear markets, not even bull markets. They're just face ripping rallies higher, which makes the market just so much harder to short. But my point is, is that this is part of the process. So just because they had huge inflows one day after all their outflows, doesn't mean that they're out of the water because what they're getting is more 
more and more volatility, which is not good for their fun. People are getting shaky. The diamond hands are turning into paper hands. On top of that, people are lining up to bet against Kathy Wood. Jesse Felder here, a real smart guy, posted an article about it from the Financial Times. The number of put options outstanding on the ARK Innovation ETF hit a high of 368,000 contracts. And if you're buying a put option, you're buying the right to sell. So you're betting on the price of the ETF to drop. That's how you would make money. So it's kind of like short selling, but not really. It's just betting on the thing going down. You can see right here with the snarky headline, investors search out their own ARK. This pink put open interest is climbing much faster than the call open interest, meaning people are getting bearish. And for short sales directly, roughly 6.55 million of the ETF shares have been borrowed. And that's a figure that's climbed more than 1.5 million shares over the past month. Once again, the average short interest as a percentage of float for ARK holdings is 4.4%, which is above the average of the Russell 3000 and the Russell 1000. So again, the sharks are circling Kathy Wood and ARK Invest because she's so popular and her investment strategy is going to lead to a potentially huge blow up. So they want to make money on the downside. He said it is too early and she is too hot. And today short sellers are timid, but Wall Street will be ruthless in the end. The sharks are circling. They're waiting for it. And the ARK ETFs, you know, they're invested in some very small speculative stocks. And those are the ones that everyone is worried about. And those are the ones that the short sellers are looking at too, because of potential liquidity problems, because it's such a big fund trying to pile into these small names. How are they going to get out? So you can see right here on some of the names that the funds are in, they track the days to sell their stake. How long would it take? And it's looking like 15 and above 15 to 20 days. And in that amount of time, how much can that stock drop? How many moves can be made against ARK and what's going to happen to their fund during that time? So, okay, there's a lot of factors stacking up against ARK, right? But how does that affect Tesla? Where does it come into this picture? Well, Tesla, you can see is almost 10% of that same innovation ETF. So ARK has tons of exposure to that highly speculative stock. And here's where the problem comes in that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. All the most speculative things in the market are getting grouped together in one huge cluster. So like I said, ARK and Tesla, they're important to track because they're like the bellwethers of this market. Where they go, the rest of the market is gonna follow. But even between them themselves, where one goes, the other follows as well. Because they're so closely tied in investors' minds, and then also, you know, ARK has a huge investment in Tesla. And Zero Hedge talks about it right here. One of the things that ARK hasn't had to deal with over the last 18 months while they were in their meteoric rise has been a serious sell-off in Tesla. Because you can see ARK's chart right here, right? It looks amazing. Then you could look at Tesla, also looks amazing. And you'll also notice they kind of look similar, especially with the recent drop. So here's Tesla and here's ARK. It's very clear to see the tie between them. And Zero Hedge goes even farther to talk about Bitcoin, another asset with numerous ties to Wood's portfolio and positions. It's also becoming more and more volatile. So take a look at that Bitcoin chart. It also looks similar. And that's what I'm saying. All these speculative things are getting grouped together. And while it's great when they're grouped together on the upside, it gets tricky on the downside because just like they all shoot up together, they collapse together much, much faster. And speaking of, you know, Tesla and Elon, they bought a bunch of Bitcoin, right? So we got Kathy invested in Tesla, Tesla invested in Bitcoin. And then Kathy has some other exposure to Bitcoin. And you just got this triangle of a mess. Now, Tesla is the one that I like to analyze directly. Why? Because it's one of the positions that we hold in the fallible portfolio. And the fallible strategy is a momentum strategy. So you can see our TSI scanner right here. It basically takes all the stocks in the market and ranks them by their momentum. That's the numbers right here. Higher the number, the higher the momentum. And we just rotate into the top five highest stocks each month. The whole idea being if a stock has more momentum, then we're going to make more money on it, right? But check this out right here. Tesla is number six on this list, which may seem pretty good if you didn't know that Tesla was actually number one for like a straight year until we started seeing this price action happen. And for me, because you know, I track this all the time, this is very surprising to see Tesla this low because it really has been such a dominant leader in the market for a long, long, long time. But every week now I'm seeing it drop further and further down this list. It's losing its momentum. So this action that you see here, it's similar to the action that you're seeing here in ARK and somewhat similar to the action we're seeing in Bitcoin too. In our most recent market review, we talked about how there are signs of souring investor enthusiasm when it relates to Bitcoin. This is from Centix. They do the surveys. There's clearly very gloomy sentiment around Bitcoin. So when you look at all these speculative assets together, it's not looking good. ARK has been benefiting off this for years. Again, we can analyze Tesla closer. I drew this little technical channel right here saying that if Tesla broke below here, below this line, it would be a very bearish sign, especially if it went and broke its 50 day moving average as well, which it did. It sliced through both pretty nicely. And now we're seeing another little pattern form here, which will once again have to track which way it breaks out. If it breaks up to the upside, then obviously that's bullish. If it falls, then I don't know where the next support is going to 
to be. It might be the 200 day moving average. And the reason we draw these oh so beautiful lines and do this technical analysis is because we know how markets move. They compress and then they expand. So here was a compression and it expanded lower. Here is another compression. So we got to track whether it expands higher or lower again. And that's really going to be a tell for what happens with ARK Invest and those ETFs. And overall in the markets, like this is the NASDAQ right here, we are seeing a lot of volatility. And as I said, I don't think that volatility is good for Kathy and friends because with the volatility in the market, you're going to see volatility in inflows and outflows and then volatility in all the specific stocks that they're invested in. And when those speculative names that they made so much money off of on the upside, when they turn around, it is going to be brutal. And that's pretty much what our buddy Michael Burry is saying here, right? It is going to be ruthless in the end. So when one speculative thing falls over, the rest are going to get knocked over too, like dominoes. It's like a house of cards. So what exactly do you do with your investments then? Because like I said, even if you're not directly invested in any of these, this affects the entire market. Well, I actually made a whole video of exactly what to do right here. It goes deeper into the factors that are causing ARK's eventual crash because it's coming. And then it goes into exactly what we should be doing with our investments. So click this right here and I will see you in that video.